guys, welcome back to STL TV Live. I'm Christina Shields, and I'm now joined by Alex, D Alex Dietrich, the Director of Community Partnerships for the Del Mar Divide Initiative. Hi, Alex. Hi, and thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. Thank you. you. You as well. Thank you. <laughs> now tell us, what is the Del Mar Divide, and what is the, what's the initiative behind it? Well, I, I don't know that it would take our initiative to let St. Louisans know that we have deep divides. Right racially, economically, and many other ways. Mm -hmm. um, the work of Colin Gordon in Mapping Decline really outlined the history of redlining and the effects that it's had in St. Louis. Uh, what's brought this initiative to light was actually the work of a BBC reporter. Mm -hmm. He was coming to St. Louis for something that was completely unrelated and began to look up our demographic information mm -hmm. and found that every marker of quality of life is marked along Del Mar mm -hmm. and that there's a deep division and once you cross even two blocks over one one way or the other that housing economic access levels of education quality of health care all wow. of those markers are clear for some people that maybe haven't noticed the the divide he talk go a little bit more specific about what you would see like two blocks east or two blocks west or and things like that sure well Many residents in St. Louis might think that there's some maybe divisions in their own neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, but the particular area that Franz Strasser focused on was the strip of Del Mar between University City and the mm -hmm. Central West End. And within that area, two blocks one way will be the experience of maybe private streets, um, gated communities, mm -hmm. and two blocks the other would be abandoned buildings and maybe maybe dogs roaming, maybe businesses that are unoccupied, mm -hmm. um, houses that are in need of repair. Wow. And so when this report came out, what, what was the community's response? Oh, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it was as divided as anything else in St. Louis. So uh, many residents said, see, that's what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. um, it, it took this outsider to really shed light on this, while other residents felt as if it was bringing up old news, mm -hmm. um, that really we should leave some of those more negative things in the past and focus on the positive aspects of St. Louis. Right. Now, how did you get involved in, the, in this initiative then? Well, at the Missouri History Museum, we've become, I would say, a neutral space, a mm -hmm. common ground for discussions that are maybe challenging for people to have in their own areas. So we seem to be a natural fit for some of the early discussions. Mm -hmm. And so we initially started with just time for people to come together and share what they thought about this video that had really gone viral. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, this is the second year mm -hmm. um, for the initiative. Can you tell us what has been transpiring the last year or so? Sure. And in, in the first year of it, we did want to make sure people had that space to share, vent, build common ground. What were some of the things that they, they said residents said? Oh. Besides bringing up the old news and see that's what I'm talking about. Did anybody have any solutions or anything or was it still pretty much divided? Well, there are always those that have been working on the ground mm -hmm. um, that have really been part of efforts in the community. And for those people who've been working hard in their areas, um, they saw it as maybe a chance to highlight some of their efforts. And mm -hmm. so we started to hear from, towards the end of the first year, we started to hear from those who who pr were proposing solutions mm -hmm. from the ground up. So the second year, and this is, this is our finale on Sunday, yeah. we were looking at solutions and how could we support those who were doing the good work already. Good. Now, the, you, the redlining, you said that like even businesses wouldn't cross you know, the red line. What does that particularly mean, that they wouldn't, um, I guess, cater to anyone that was on, was two blocks one way, two blocks the other way? or? It, it plays out in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So there may be something as simple as a pizza delivery service that doesn't deliver to certain zip codes. Oh, wow. Um, there's also a matter of a food desert. So um, the West End and North St. Louis are included in an area named a food desert in which you have very limited access to fresh foods beyond convenience stores. Wow. But well, we have a lot more to talk about with Alex. You guys don't want to go away. See how you can be a part of the solution coming up next. There's an event happening on Sunday that you need to know about. Um, thanks so much for watching. We'll be right back with more from Alex.